Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here at the ITU headquarters in Geneva. And I have another guest who returned for a second time. His name is Wendell Wallach. We know him well, bioethicist at Yale University. Good to have you, you here. Thank you very much. You came last year to talk about ethics. <laughs> Why return? Why return? No, I just found this a very uh, stimulating event and I'm particularly interested that we reinforce any initiative that promotes AI that in ways that will be beneficial to the billions of our brethren on this planet who are truly having a difficult time. Are we getting there? No, not yet. I think we've got people beginning to think about how you can apply this technology, but there are still ambiguities whether in the end AI will also be detrimental to the same populations, particularly if we have massive job losses or if AI exacerbates inequalities. If those two things happen, then the very technologies that might help mitigate hunger or poverty in, other, in one area or disease in one area could contribute it to, an, uh, to it for other populations. Who do you have to convince, persuade? Well, I think it's not as much about convincing and persuading as getting a public dialogue going where people are not so caught up in the hype or the obfuscations about what these technologies can be and they have a clear-eyed sense of what the possibilities are and, have a, and start to think deeply about what they want and then vote in the, the leaders or at least if it's not, if they aren't in democratic societies, support those leaders who are moving forward in ways that meet their needs and don't get diluted into supporting leaders who are creating, who are, who are creating um, fake news is, I guess, the big phrase in, in America these days. The, is is yeah. the, the UN the right platform for this? Or is it the only platform? Well, I think... Uh, in the end, whether the UN will be the right platform or not is hard to say. All I'm seeing is the UN always has this possibility of promoting ideas that require attention from the leadership. The UN is very seldom the platform that can move many of these issues ahead substantially. But there's two, two aspects of the UN. One aspect is the public news around the intransigence between countries, and the other is all the work that is, true, that is being done to promote the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and I think that's why the UN is so important. You know, in spite of, in spite of our frustration sometimes with the geopolitics and how it bogs down here, at the UN, there is no question of the amount of good that is being done through the many facets of the UN. So we're, so we're getting there? We're getting there, I think. Well, I mean, it's not even that we're getting there. That's been going on. That's not, that's not like something that's totally new. It's only new in the forms that I think the, F, the Sustainable Development Goals have given us some new motivation. They've given us the right structure. They've given us a way to think comprehensively about what is needed. Now, this conference is giving the tech entrepreneurs and some of the government officials and some of the philanthropies and the representatives of civil society a chance to look at how AI can be instrumental in promoting the sustainable development goals. But as I've been trying to outline and have mentioned here earlier, it's a two-edged sword and it has a lot to do with what choices we make over the next few years or whether AI is really funded for these projects that will truly be good for those who are hurting or whether the aspects of AI that feed the needs of the elites are what dominate. Brilliant. Wendell Wallach from Yale University and a senior advisor to the Hastings Center. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you ever so much.